Book of Genesis chapter 28. Jacob sent to Laban. Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and directed him. You must not take away from the Canaanite women. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your, fa your mother's father, and take as your wife one from there one of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, that you may become a company of peoples. May he give the blessing of Abraham to you and to your offspring with you, that you may take possession of the land of your sojournings that God gave to Abraham. Thus Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Padan Aram, to Laban, the son of Bethuel the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's father, Jacob and Jacob's and Esau's mother. Sorry. Esau marries an Ishmaelite. Now Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padan Aram to take a wife from there, and that as he blessed him, he directed him, he must not take a wife from the Canaanite women. And that Jacob had obeyed his father and his mother and, and gone to Padan Aram. So when Esau saw that the Canaanite women did not please Isaac, his father, Esau went to Ishmael and took as his wife, besides the wives he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebaioth. Don't know if I'm saying that name right. Jacob's dream. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and stayed there that night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So early in the morning Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at, first, at the first. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And, all, and of all that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. So, in this chapter, right, uh, Jacob is sent to Laban, which sort of continues on from the previous chapter when, you know, Esau was trying to kill him. Well, not trying to kill him, but, you know, thinking about it, right? And essentially, he ends up having that dream, which I believe is like the like sort of main part of this chapter. And in that dream, it's revealed that God is indeed with Jacob. Now I took uh, more formal notes here that I'm going to read through. Jacob is sent to Laban and is blessed by Isaac. He is also told to not take a Canaanite to be his wife. Now, when I was writing that, I thought that, well, I just got the name Canaanite and Hittite mixed up because in the previous chapter, it is revealed that Rebecca isn't really the biggest fan of the Hittites, which Esau happens to have two of as his wives. And I thought that they were going to end up being connected, but I was just completely wrong. Uh, it's Isaac does not want Jacob marrying a Canaanite. But, you know, like, either way, that note is still very sound. Esau, not knowing that his parents don't want their sons to marry Canaanites, wait, no, not knowing, 
Esau, now knowing that his parents don't want their sons to marry Canaanites, marries an Ishmaelite named Mahalath. Now, if you have been keeping up with, you know, the chapters of Genesis, uh, you may know that he has now married his cousin. And Jacob is essentially being sent to do the same thing. Uh, so I'm just going to say right now, uh, Genesis days, very different rules. Different rule book entirely, right? So Esau, now knowing that his parents don't want their sons to marry Canaanites, marries his cousin, Mahalath who descended from Ishmael, who descended from Abraham when, well, Abraham and Hagar, I think. If I remember her name correctly, it's Hagar. Well, not Hagar, but Hagar. So, yeah, uh, Ishmael is a descendant of Abraham. He isn't Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham that he had with Sarai, his wife. Well, Sarah, his wife. So yeah, uh, there's just the family tree there. Jacob has a dream where he sees angels ascending and descending from heaven on a ladder, and a Lord stands above it. The Lord then tells Jacob that his offspring shall spread to the ends of the earth. So, in the uh, in verse four of chapter twenty-eight, Isaac passes on the blessing of Abraham to Jacob and you know the blessing of Abraham is very much talked about a lot in these chapters of Genesis and essentially what that promise is is that Abraham's descendants shall be numerous and everyone on earth shall be blessed by Abraham's descendants and here we see that again passed on to Jacob, like, hey, your descendants are going to bless the earth. And yeah, so it's the blessing that's being passed through the family tree. And I assume that the more we read in Genesis, the more we're going to hear of this promise and the more we're going to see it become more and more fulfilled. In verse 12, angels traverse between heaven and earth. So that's the verse about uh, the like Jacob's dream where he sees the angels going up and down the ladder. So, yeah, I feel like we can take that dream as being factual in this context. Well, not in this context, but just factual, right? If you're a pr practitioner of the Christian faith, we can take that as fact that angels traverse between heaven and earth. In verse 15, God will not leave until he has fulfilled his promise. So here we get a verse that shows off more of God's character, right? I'm going to read it through. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. So that's about you know, God promising that he will make Jacob's descendants spread to the end of the earth and everyone shall be blessed by his descendants. So the blessing of Abraham. And here we get to see more and more of God's character. Well, you know, we already know God's character because it is said from the beginning that God will fulfill every promise that he makes. But here we get to see that again. Uh, more confirmation about it so we essentially as we read through uh, the Bible we're gonna be seeing a lot of you can trust the Lord because you know obviously right like he's a good God and in verse 22 and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house and of all that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. So this is the first example of tithing that we see in the Bible. And tithing, for those who don't know, is giving... Well, it's like an Old Testament thing where 
for every blessing that God gives, you give a tenth of that back. So that would be like, you know, just essentially returning a part of the blessing that you have received. So for everything that God gives you, you give back to God. And you can do that through, you know, giving that to church or just sharing God's love and the blessing that you have received with others because that is very pleasing to God. Oh, my camera just glitched out, but either way, we're at the end of the video, so we're good. So yeah, that's everything I have to say today. Thank you for watching. Keep running when no one else is and have a blessed day.